one of the things I definitely didn't grow up with was eating seasonally. I mean, we had asparagus every week of the year, and asparagus doesn't grow all year long. So one of the things we've tried to do with our kids and what we're doing a lot in the farmer's market is saying, hey, there's a time of the year where asparagus is in season, and it's when it's cheap. You know, when you're buying it and it's expensive, it's typically because it's being brought in from Chile or Argentina or somewhere south of the border um, or south of uh, the equator when it's our, you know, time. When our cold season's here, we're, we're importing it. Um, when it's sweet corn time, we should celebrate sweet corn rather than eating it all year long. You know, and when you're eating it in season, then you, it was picked locally and you're getting it at the peak of its nutrition. So we've tried to encourage chefs to have a portion of their menu where it's changing. It's adapting to what's fresh. It's adapting to what farmers are bringing to their back door. So if you go to some of the restaurants that you may see here or that you start to catch wind or, or you know, sourcing local, typically their specials is where you're going to eat the best stuff that's local. They're going to go, I just got a bushel of artichokes at the back door. We have smoked artichokes or grilled artichokes for the special. So always ask, is there a special? Because it encourages the chefs to be creative and to adapt to what's seasonal rather than it's the same thing on the menu all year long. Because when that's the case, they have to because of market demand. I mean, because of your demand, you know, supply you with an asparagus dish anytime you show up in that restaurant. And at some point of the year, we aren't growing it. So it has to come from somewhere. Um, more thoughtful, more memorable. Um, Tony, he's not, he's up north now, but he ran Big Wheel Provisions Food Truck and is a good friend. He was one of the first guys that really started to make it uh, a celebration. I mean, his newsletter would go out and be like, oh my gosh, it's time for this type of honey. We don't do this type of honey any other time during the year, and we're going to do this great dish. Or, hey, the quail, we have brand new quail eggs for the spring, and you got to try this dish. Um, it's way more interesting when you get to try something that you haven't tried before and it's delicious, and then when it's gone, you miss it, and you look forward to it coming back again. So we're just trying to reintroduce people to food and get them um, excited about it and, and see that it can be something that is not just a drive-through experience anymore. And then also being, being prideful about what we have here. And we have some really excellent things that are you know from Central Florida. We've got muscadine grapes and seminal pumpkins and, and things that are unique to Central Florida, you know, our strawberry season and, you know, is coming, I think we planted maybe two weeks ago. And so right in the December area, we're coming into the peak of our strawberry season. Um, buy them up, love it, jam them, you know, do whatever you want to do with them. Buy them at the peak of their freshness and freeze them. They still keep their nutrition. Um, and then what you're seeing is you're, you're seeing people that are taking those elements and handcrafting them, that it's not, um, it's not a commodity anymore. They're taking the, the essence of that that item and making something really unique about it that um, has a reflection of who they are, their, their um, I guess, artistic take on it. So like even bread saying, yes, I can throw bread in the oven, but if I you know, add these other ingredients, it's tastier, the crumb's better, the crust is delicious, it looks good. These are people that are giving a lot of attention and care to what they're doing, and it makes eating more enjoyable, and you're more enticed to eat things that are healthful. Um, we really see a lot of local entrepreneurs championing things outside of their restaurant, let's say. So this is um, Julie and Chris. They're the co-owners of Dandelion Community Cafe just over here in Thornton Park. Uh, they do a great job of not only you know, serving great local food, but also stimul stimulating local events, creating opportunities for engagement. Um, they've got, she runs Front Porch Radio, which is on uh, WPRK, Rollins Radio each week. Basically a, an audio billboard of things that are cool and noteworthy and let you start to realize that Forgive my language, Orlando doesn't suck. There's really great stuff here. And these people that, are, that care about food enough to say, we're going to be here and create great things, they're also tied into other awesome things happening in the community. And so they want to champion that too. They don't want to move. They're like, we're here. We want this to be the cool city that we want to live in the rest of our lives. And so they're dedicating a lot of their free time and even some of their working time to you know, uh, integrating what they do into the community and making it a, a better place to live. And so it's really seeing a lot of I guess, renaissance in the way people feel about Orlando. Uh, there's a lot of new pride that's stimulated because of what's happened in food, but then the out, outpouring of um, those passions and energies into other areas. 